Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Carl Freund, and welcome to the Inside View Real Estate Podcast. Today, we're gonna to be talking about should you buy some short-term rentals like Airbnb and VRBO. You're gonna to wanna to stay tuned. I'm highly caffeinated, I'm fired up, let's go. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, no matter what time it is. I hope that you, my friends, are having an amazing day. I'm here with my highly charismatic Ooh. co-host, Mr. Josh Zuniga, yeah. and today we're talking about Airbnbs and VRBOs, one of my least favorite subjects, but I'm fucking fired it's a up. Hot topic, Carl. Tell them exactly why you're fired up. So just just so you guys. Uh, know. Do we want to have story time? Yeah, Carl has. Um, you, you've had five. I had eight. You had eight at one time. Airbnbs, like, and we all know that Airbnbs. You know, when they, when they, when they first come out, 2013 yeah, was, was when they sweet. launched. Yeah, probably. 2015 sweet. is when they got really really hot. I remember that for sure because I was telling, hey, mom, dad, we need to get one of these, right? Yep. So they they did do well. They did cash flow, right? But let's talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, the pros and the cons of Airbnbs because I even have clients, I even have a family member that called me uh, two days ago saying, hey, I want an Airbnb in Phoenix. No, you let's don't. get into it. No, you don't. Yeah. Okay. I told let, him. Let me, I, told him be, I told him what everything. Let me be I impartial everything. because okay. I think I'm really jaded. Uh, okay, and I'll tell you guys some stories. The stories, guys. the stories are ridiculous. You know, yeah. we've had uh, hookers and we've had drug houses and we've had they've had strippers parties. and we've had parties Ooh. that ended up on the news and Snapchat and all wow. sorts of shit. We've had, you know, just some really cops. nasty st- cops, cops many cops, yeah. many cops. Um, I got a twenty-five hundred dollars nuisance ticket. Um, I've got you know mm-hmm. stories for days, my friend. Yes. Let me talk about the good stuff first. Yeah. Here's why I like Airbnb because it generally outperforms a long-term rental. Mm-hmm. Long-term rentals have basically two disadvantages when it comes to you know, looking at Airbnbs. Number one, a long-term rental is great because you have consistent cash flow, but sometimes it's a pain in the ass to kick a tenant out. Like if they stop paying rent, especially right now, it's really difficult. It's very easy on Airbnb because you shut the power off, you shut the internet off, and guess what? They go find some other place to live. Mm-hmm. You can't really do that for a tenant, right? So mm-hmm. one disadvantage. There's laws that protect the tenants, guys. Yeah, there's some Arizona, Arizona Landlord Tenant Act yes. does not apply to hotel guests, okay? So number two. Um, there's always a weird turnover. You know, so say you have a year, a tenant, and then it flips over. You're going to have a 30-day gap. So you're losing about 8% of your income every single year to vacancy. I don't like vacancy rates that are that high. And then the cash flow consistency, too. So like you're going to have one month where you're z- literally zero, and then you're going to have mediocre income, mediocre, mediocre income for the next you know, 12 months. And so you have these weird gaps. I don't like paying mortgages you know, for houses sitting empty. That sucks. Airbnb is never vacant for an entire month. I've never had an Airbnb v- be vacant for an entire month. What's, what's your occupancy like on average? So it depends. I like to keep my occupancy probably about 55%. Okay. And I don't want it to be 100% because number one, it tears the shit up on the house. Number two, it means my rates are probably too low, right? So I can bump up my rates, uh, get even more income for, the, for less time, you know? And so things like air conditioning, you know, pool maintenance, you know, all those things, the wear and tear up. items, it adds yeah, up, yeah. you know, just the bedding and stuff like that. So if you want to keep your occupancy high, uh, because people are like, oh, I want to be 100%. You don't want to be 100% in Airbnb. 55%, you know, obviously 100% of the weekends, you know, and then, you know, make your cash flow during the week, you know, but, but choose your tenants. You know, so by choosing your tenants, I mean, you know, raise your rates to, to that sweet spot where you get a, a good standard, quality guys. tenant. Yeah, have a standard. Have a good standard. Uh, the other thing, too, is like just, be aware of your market surroundings, you know? So like, for example, if the market is changing, like COVID was a, a, a scary thing. Yeah. For me, I was like, oh shit, because in March of last year, fully booked. Busiest part of the season we've ever had. Yeah. Looking at massive cash flow, I'm high-fiving Ashley, you know, like we're like ready to kick some ass. What was our income for March? Boom. Like, like 100 bucks. bucks. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, scary. No, that's really scary. scary guys. Terrifying. That can happen. If something happens like that in the market again, boom. You think you're, you're, you're high-fiving, but then you're like, oh, what the hell? Yeah, you're shit out of luck. Yeah. Right? And, and thank God we actually had a decent recovery. But with that recovery came a change in demographic. Our houses got robbed three times, back to back to back. I happened to walk in on one while it was being robbed. Was this the TVs? It was the TVs wow. and the bed. Wow, 75s, stole, man. Dude, they stole my bed. You know, and we've had tenants walk away with TVs and be like, oh, it wasn't there. I'm like, dude, we take videos before and after. Like, we're not stupid. You know, and so just constant issues, parties, all the other shit you're going to have to deal with. Uh, is it worth the cash flow? For me, it wasn't. Yeah. For me, it wasn't. You know, and so I had to look at my time and say, look, I'm spending way too much time on these Airbnbs trying to turn them over. 
my standards are very, very high. So to reach that standard took a lot of effort, took a lot of maintenance, it took a lot of human hours to get that sorted you out. You were exhausted. Let's be I'm let's fucking be tired, you man. Exhausted. Yeah, and then you know they're always calling you at two a.m. because they're drunk and they lock themselves out. You know the deadbolts for the electronic deadbolts. You put the code in wrong five times, it locks you out for like half an hour. You do it again, it locks you out for like an hour. You know, and so we're having to go over these houses at two a.m. I'm getting calls from the cops at four o'clock in the morning saying they're running a freaking trap house. You know, like all this different shit where I'm like, I have to make a decision for me personally. When I started in 2017, I thought it was the best business model ever. I thought it was the best business model ever. I'm gonna throw Airbnb under the bus for a second because you kind of suck. You, you favor the guests over the hosts and then you leave the hosts on the, on the hook for a lot of shit. And they need to change their business model pretty quick yeah. because they're gonna lose a big part of the market share to VRBO because VRBO actually cares. Yeah. And VRBO is pretty. Uh, you're starting to see a pool, you know, go towards VRBO. Yeah, and and I've, read, it, I've read you know, it in the stats. VRBO yes. started the model, right? They really did start that model. Yeah. Airbnb came in behind with better tech and easier platform to and use, marketing. Yeah. and marketing, and they made it look sexy, and you know, then they forgot about the most important thing, which is the hosts. Mm -hmm. And so when you fuck, fuck the hosts, host, no host, no property, hosts are gonna fuck, fuck you. you. Yeah. And then now they're gonna go to a different platform called VRBO. And VRBO is capturing a big portion of that market back. And that was very strategic on them as far as very, investing very into their hosts. Yes. And actually and, making you know, sure they So VRBO did some very important things. Like they took a lot of time to understand, you know, what the host needs. Yeah, into how to solve those problems and fill those gaps. And so there's a lot more support on the VRBO side, in my opinion, not fact, in my opinion, versus Airbnb. I think it's a better platform. And so you've got to understand, like, you know, you're dealing with hospitality. You are in the hospitality industry. You're not renting a house. You are in the hospitality industry. There are standards, expectations, uh, you know, and strategic moves that you need to make in order to be competitive. So, you know, if you're willing to do with, you know, prostitutes setting up shop, you know, once a year in your house, you're willing to do with getting shit broken all the time. You're willing to do with holes in the walls and holes in the doors, paint scuffs. Like you can't get emotionally attached to your assets. Definitely not. Like don't take it personal. Don't take it personal. Don't feel like don't it's your actual. Don't take it personal. Home. And it's not personal, right? Like you're dealing with complete strangers on a platform that has basically no uh, screening process, right? So you're inviting people into your home or into your asset that don't give a shit. It's a rental, you know. And so all the things that happen in rentals happen in Airbnbs. And same thing with hotel rooms. You know, all the shit that you hear. And just to give you a little bit of background, guys. So. Um, majority of your properties were here within Old Town Scottsdale, Tempe, yes. correct? Yes. All right. So just just so you know, if you're not familiar with Scottsdale, which I feel like a lot of people are, we're near an entertainment district where all the bars, restaurants, fun, you know, actually occurs. So yeah. the type of demographic we're actually coming in is going to say the younger generation, 40 and under, maybe 25 to 40. Mm -hmm. And when they come here, yeah, they're having a good time. They're playing beer pong. They're having bull parties. They're thinking like it's their whole own hotel room, but they yes. have the house. So shit is going to happen, right? You're going to have things that are going to get broken and you're going to have those phone calls. So I'm not saying that, you know, obviously, you say Carl was jaded because of the area where he was at, but there's different areas, like, say, in, in our East Valley or our West Valley or even, like, up north, we have Sedona and Prescott, where the demographic you're actually getting in, I would say, holds himself to, a, say, a little bit higher standard, Correct, yeah. and you're not going to be having a lot of what those damages are. Yes, are you going to have something at some point in time? Absolutely. It's real estate. It's property. Things happen. People make mistakes. It's, gonna, it's going to occur. So... Market to your demographic, though. Exactly. Like, if you want higher-end clientele, make a higher-end Airbnb. Yeah, exactly. You want the shitty clientele, make the cheapest sh yeah. yeah. And, and like, what, do, what he means by that is, like, know exactly where your location is going to be, and then obviously set your standard as far as what your price is, because a person that's gonna is that's cool with paying two fifty is probably not gonna be cool with paying six or seven hundred dollars a night. Right. And that individual is gonna probably I wouldn't see hold themselves to a higher standard, right? And have a pr more appreciation for that type of property. Yeah, and understand. I mean, we were making good money. Yeah. You know, let's yeah, let's talk money. about that. Talk about the cash flow on average if you're doing an Airbnb uh, based off of the location you were yeah. in per property. So I mean, we were grossing about six hundred thousand a year. Okay. But the problem is that a lot of those expenses were, you know. Pretty, pretty rough, so the AC just gets knackered, right? I mean, they, just the first thing you do in a hotel, what's the first thing you do? You turn the AC down to 65. In Phoenix, it's really difficult to maintain 65 degrees in a house. You can't do it. You have people that are coming from the Northeast, from the Midwest, where the max temperature is like 85 degrees in the summertime. They come out here, it's 110, they're like, holy shit, and the first thing you do is turn it down to, you know, the, the lowest it'll go, Arctic. You know, the, all the thermostats are set to Arctic, and you're like, you know, your AC bills are a thousand bucks and then your ACs are getting beat up and then, you know, the pools are 
turning green because everybody wears body lotions and all the other stuff and then you can't control the, the, the chemicals. And then the house cleaning and then the maintenance and people rip off the freaking towel, the towel racks and you know, all the shit, they break glasses. <laughs> You, yeah. know, they, you gotta drain the pool because you, you drop glass drain the pool, in the pool. You know, right? There's yeah. glass in there. They, yeah. You know, and people stick forks down the disposals, or they put glass down the disposals, and all the shit that you can possibly plumbing issues. They flush things that should never be flushed. You know, and I'm not even going into detail on that. Yeah. You know, but then you got to deal with those kind of issues, Latex. and so un- yes, many many uh, <laughs> many hygiene items yeah. as well. And so understanding that the maintenance costs are going to be about triple what you think they are. So if you think they're 500 bucks a month, no, they're not. They're like 1,500 bucks a month minimum. You know, because you got to have good plumbers, you got to have good painters, you got to have an electrician on staff, you're going to have to have, you know, all these things, especially if you scale, to make it efficient, to make it even worth your while. Is there money to be made in it? Absolutely. Do I believe in that business model? Absolutely. It's here to stay. Do I think there's a lot of advantages to that? 100%. Was it worth it for me? Fuck no. You know, so you just got to understand that. Like, how much is your time worth? And how much is your lifestyle worth? You can't take vacations. Yeah. You yeah, like you said, yeah, exactly. Like you are, you have to be there unless you're, you're going to have, and, yeah. and that's another thing, guys. If you're managing yourself and you don't want to go with through the headaches, you don't want to go through the phone calls and actually like, going to the property, you can hire a property management company. Yeah. On average, they usually start around 15 to 20 plus percent that are going to be taking from your proceeds. Yeah. And then obviously that's going to be your net, but you and I discussed it before. Well, even like within, um, 2019, Scottsdale got rated number one as far as the most profitable Airbnb city, yeah, for sure. right? So that was great. And I w- you would say be- you would out- average anywhere between forty to probably like $70,000 gross per property? Yeah, I would say the minimum would be about 50000 per property. Yeah. You know, and some of those gross 80000 And that's good because honestly, guys, if you're safe, say you're even cash flowing $500 a month on a property in a long-term rental, yeah. times that by 12, you're at 6000 but you're saying you're, you're gonna go over here and make around forty to thirty thousand? Yeah, the numbers make sense. It looks sexy. It looks sexy. It looks sexy. Right? I understand there's a lot of work that goes into it. Yeah. And so people are gonna be like, well, how much did you spend on your house? You know, eight million dollars? No. The most I spent on a house was five hundred and twenty five thousand. My average cost to furnish it was between twenty and twenty five thousand each. Mm-hmm. And don't use cheap furniture. If you're gonna do it, go higher end. Go to like West Elm, you know, that kind of shit where you're gonna have something that's gonna last. The cheap furniture will absolutely deteriorate instantaneously. Like you can't go to like living spaces and get the cheapest shit. Go out, I know I do too, it's good style. But it's not the quality that you need. You need like hotel, commercial grade quality furniture. Terrible. Don't yeah. make my mistakes because you know, after six months we're replacing beds, you know, legitimately, you know. And so things that happen on vacation, you can imagine, you know, a lot of wear and tear on your stuff. Man. Yeah, man. They're getting, they're getting broke down. You know, and, and sure. keep many sheets on hand. Yeah. Yes. And that was another good thing as far as even like having staff. It's not just the people that are cleaning, but you oh, need yeah. to have a plumber on deck, a handyman yes. on deck, all AC, guy, AC guy guys, on deck, AC guys, all those kind of stuff. That, of those are all the hidden costs that people do not talk about, yes. right? And But they add up. They really yeah. add up because obviously you have what you're making gross, but then you have all your maintenance fees and then obviously what you're paying for this property management company mm-hmm. because you don't want to have you know, Carl's stories over here where you're having cops called and you know, being waking up at 2 in the morning. So... If that model is great, if, 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 it, if that model works for you and you want to actually get involved in that, by all means, take the jump. Yep. Take the leap of faith and see exactly um, how it's going to work for you and what's your strategy going to be for the Airbnb. But we would obviously recommend you know, hiring a property management company and also be very strategic on where you're actually going to be locating your, your property. Number one rule in real estate, location. Exactly. 100%. Yeah. Here. And obviously hold your, hold, your, hold your property to a higher standard if you want to actually get the prices. There's obviously things you can do like with the algorithm to get your first people in there and start getting reviews and get the, get the ratings. Thing. Pictures yes. are the biggest thing as well. Obviously putting good furniture in there. So yeah. there's pros and there's cons you know, to every, you know, every investment. But if it works out for you guys, like your car was saying, he, and he grossed anywhere around 50 to 55,000 per property. Minimum. That's, yeah, that's an amazing year for somebody, right? That's an amazing year. And this is just something you can do on the side and start with. And if you want, if you like it, then the model can increase and you, know, you can do two, maybe in two years and see if that works. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I, I, I can't just hate on it and just blankly say don't do it because for the right person is absolutely a great investment vehicle. Yeah. There's no doubt. Absolutely. All right, guys, that's what we have for you on the Inside View Real Estate podcast for Airbnbs. If you want any additional information, please feel free to reach out to us. Until then, we'll see you next time. Love you.